Hello friends, in this video we will synthesize luminol and demonstrate its property of chemiluminescence. For this experiment we will need 2.1 grams of 3 nitrophthalic acid, the synthesis which is included in a previous video, 1.5 grams of hydrazine sulfate, 2.1 grams of anhydrous sodium acetate, 12.5 grams of sodium dithionite, 5 grams of sodium hydroxide, 12.5 milliliters of glycerin. Start by taking a 250 milliliter beaker and then add 2.1 grams of 3 nitrophthalic acid, 1.5 grams of hydrazine sulfate, and 2.1 grams of anhydrous sodium acetate. Add around 15 milliliters of water and stir to get a clear solution. You might need to heat up a little to dissolve everything. When the solution turns clear, 12.5 ml of glycerin was added to the beaker. Place a thermometer and start heating the contents of the beaker. Initially, water boils away and then the contents of the beaker slowly changes color into a dark yellow-orange. The temperature was maintained at 200 degrees C for approximately 10 minutes. This involves the first phase of synthesis, the formation of 3 nitrophthalohydroside by the reaction of hydrazine hydrate with 3 nitrophthalic acid. The hydrazine sulfate reacts with sodium acetate to form hydrazine acetate and sodium bisulfate. At elevated temperatures, the hydrazine acetate breaks down to release free hydrazine and acetic acid. Acetic acid evaporates at the higher temperatures and hydrazine reacts with 3 nitrothalic acid to form 3 nitrothalohydroside. After 10 minutes, it's cooled down to room temperature and then 50 ml of water was added to the beaker. This will help dissolve all the byproducts which are water soluble and all the unreacted compounds. Our desired compound 3 nitrothalohydroside do not dissolve in water. Here you can see me desperately steering with a thermometer, one shouldn't be using a thermometer as a steering rod. Then filter the crude 3 nitrothalohydroside. I am using a vacuum filtration method. Be careful not to splash chemicals while transferring from one container to other. This is the crude compound 3 nitrothalohydroside after filtration. Now we will reduce the nitro group on it. For that, transfer the crude product to around 40 ml of 5% sodium hydroxide solution. I dropped in the steering bar from the suction filtration funnel, which had some 3 nitrothalohydroside stuck onto it. The compound dissolves in it, giving a red color. Add the whole of the compound into it. After everything is dissolved, we get a clear, deep red solution. Now we dump in 12.5 grams of solid sodium dithionite to the beaker. Immediately you see an exothermic reaction taking place and the color of the solution turns pale brown and a precipitate appears. This is the 3 amino thalohydroside or luminol. Sodium dithionite reduces the nitro group of 3 nitrophthalohydroside to form luminol. Again, I tell you not to splash chemicals while transferring from one container to other. Make sure the solution is neutral by using an indicator paper. In this case, the solution is already neutral. Continue stirring and gently heating the solution for about 30 minutes. This will help take the reaction forward to completion. After that, I decided to add more water to remove all the water-soluble impurities and we are left with the crude product luminol. It was then vacuum filtered. Here is the crude product luminol. The compound seems relatively pure for demonstration of chemiluminescence. Hence, I did not recrystallize the product. If you want, you can recrystallize the product from ethyl alcohol. Now we move to the demonstration of chemiluminescence. For this demonstration, you will need two solutions. 
Solution A is luminol dissolved in 5% sodium hydroxide solution. Solution B could be any oxidizer. In my case, I am using dilute sodium hypochlorite solution. For the effect, just mix them together. When luminol gets oxidized, electrons in luminol are excited to a higher energy state and as they return to the ground state, they release energy in the form of a photon. The wavelength of photon corresponds to the blue light which we see. So that's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed the video. These are all my supporters in Patreon who are financially helping me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me financially via Patreon or PayPal. The links of both of them are given in the description. Once again, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button so that you will get notified about my future videos. Thank you.